morning students today we are going to discuss integration part 1 this topic is most important for the mathematics one and specially for the first chapter for your series which we will start very shortly okay so please be, uh, be careful in this our uh, today's and tomorrow's lecture both lecture are most imp for the first chapter of mathematics one that is courier series so let's start with the some basic formula <coughs> first formula of integration is x is to n the formula is x is to n plus 1 upon n plus 1 the second one is integration of 1 upon x with respect to x that is log x we can also write as ln x integration of cos x is sin x and the integration of sin x is minus cos x uh, as you know the differentiation and integration both are exactly opposite process integration of e raised to x is just e raised to x there is no any change in this function after the differentiation or integration integration of k raised to x that is a raised to x upon log a where your base is e in all formula c is any constant term <coughs> the next integration of One upon x square plus a square, that is one upon a tan inverse x by a. Okay, where c is any constant. Now, integration of one upon x square minus a square, that is one by two a log x minus a upon x plus a. Students, in this formula, x is variable and a is any constant. So please. keep in mind your variable will be the first term and constant will be the second term okay now the next formula is integration of 1 upon a square minus a square in this case constant term will be the first term and the variable will be the second term at that time we can also write minus integration of 1 upon x square minus a square so we have to just put the minus sign before this a uh, formula okay now the next is the next is when in the uh, formula 2a integration of One upon under root x square plus a square. See, both are different. In this case, we have just one upon x square plus a square. But for this formula, this is the square root. So one upon square root of x square plus a square. At that time, the formula is log modulus of x plus under root x square plus a square, where c is any constant. and the same formula but one upon under root x square minus a square just sign is different at that time the log x plus under root x square minus a square the rest all thing is same the next one integration of one upon under root a square minus a square in uh, the 2b and 2c in 2b variable will be the first and constant term is the last and in 2c constant term will be the first and variable is last at that time formula is sin inverse x upon a you can also write as minus cos inverse x upon a now the next formula is 1 upon mod x under root x square minus a square the formula is 1 upon sec inverse x by a or we can also write minus 1 upon a cosec inverse x by a the next formula uh, the difference between the 2a and 4a here the square root is in the denominator but in 4a 
the square root which is in the numerator so the square root of x square plus a square that is x by 2 under root x square plus a square plus a square by 2 log x plus under root x square plus a square students uh, before uh, going to the uh, further formula i want to tell you one announcement if you will uh, present in whole lecture then and only then your attendance will be uh, taken as a uh, present otherwise your attendance will be taken as a absent okay again i repeat if you will present in whole lecture then and only then your attendance will be as uh, will be marked as present otherwise your attendance will be marked as absent uh power issue or whatever the other issue uh, you have to join through your mobile but your uh, if you pres uh, you will present in the whole lecture then and only then your attendance will be marked as present otherwise it is absent <clears throat> okay so uh, the next formula here 4b that is integration of under root x square minus a square x by 2 under root x square minus a square plus minus a square by 2 log x plus under root x square minus a square the next one integration of under root a square minus x square dx is equal to x by 2 under root a square minus x square plus a square by 2 sine inverse x by a. Dear students, please keep all this formula in your mind. It will be helpful in your mathematics once uh, in the various chapters. Okay. Now, the next, this one, integration of sec square x with respect to x, that is 10x. It means the integration of sec, sec square x is 10x. Integration of cos x square is minus cot x. Integration of sec x 10x, here x. Integration of sec x 10, that is just sec x. Integration of cos x cot x, that is minus cos x. Integration of 10x, that is log sec x. Integration of cot x, log mod sin x. Integration of cos x that is log mod 10x by 2 or we can write log cos x minus cot x and the last integration of sec x that is log mod 10 pi by 4 plus x by 2 or we can write log sec x plus 10x so let's move with the example based on this integration so start with the first example <coughs> that is integration that is or the formula of integration of x raised to n. Here, x raised to 6. So, the x raised to 6 plus 1 upon 6 plus 1. Okay. So, the answer is x raised to 7 by 7. If we have given <coughs> sorry, integration 2x whole raised to 5. Students, uh, we keep this 2 raised to 5 uh, beside the integration. So, keep 2 raised to 5 and then integrate x raised to 5, then answer is x raised to 6 by 6 and keep 2 raised to 5 as it. But here, uh, they did the integration of 2 raised to 5 also, so they have to multiply by 1 half. Now, example based on the formula 1 by x. So, the integration of 1 by x is log x. Okay, so the integration of pi by x. So, if we keep this pi, uh, out of the integral, then pi integration of 1 by x and the integration of 1 by x is log x. Similarly, for the example number 4, the integration of 1 upon x plus 2. Here, the derivative of, here, our denominator is x plus 2, right? And the derivative of this denominator is what? 1. And when derivative occur, derivative of denominator occur in the numerator, at that time, your integration will be log of denominator. See, we'll take one more example. Suppose we have 3 upon 3x plus 5 
into dx, right? So, what is our derivative of denominator? Derivative of denominator is three, which is in numerator. So, we'll keep log of denominator. This is our answer. Okay. Similarly, suppose if we have integration of 2x upon x square plus 4, right? With respect to x, at that time, the derivative of denominator is what? Derivative of denominator with respect to x is 2x, which is also in the numerator. So, we can directly write the integration of this whole term is log of denominator, that is log of x square plus 4 plus c is any constant. Okay. Now, if we have integration of c upon 2x minus 6. Okay. So, the derivative of denominator is what? 2. But here I have 3. So, I will keep this 3 before the integral. Here I multiply by 2 and then divide by 2. Okay. 2x minus 6. Here integration with respect to x. So, if I keep this 3 out of the integral and if I multiply and divide by 2, now the derivative of the denominator is in the numerator. So, my answer will be 3 by 2 log of denominator that is log of 2x minus 6 plus c. So, the same way for example number 5 my integral is 6 upon 9x minus 2. Okay, if I keep 6 out of the integral 6 integration of 1 upon 9x minus 2. So, what is the derivative of my denominator? The derivative of my denominator is 9. So, if I keep 6, 9 upon 9x minus 2 dx, if I multiply and divide with 9, then my denom the derivative of the denominator is 9. So, I keep this log of log of 9x minus 2 plus c and the simplification is 2 by 3. So, this is my answer. <coughs> now, example based on formula integration of cos x that is sin x. So, the integration of cos phi x is integration of cos phi x is sin phi x and the derivative of this theta is in the denominator. So, sin phi x upon phi or also we can write into 1 by phi. Okay. Now, the next example is based on the integration of sin x. The integration of sin x which is minus cos x. Okay. So, integration of sin 2x minus 1 dx. So, for the integration of sin 2x minus 1 dx is here. The integration of sin is minus cos. Theta will remain the same. That is 2x minus 1. And the derivative of this theta is in the denominator. So, the derivative of this theta is 2. So, we can write as 1 half. Okay. Now, huh, the one most IMP thing is you cannot integrate cos square or sin square theta like this way. Okay, this formula is only for power 1. For power 1. So, keep in mind, you cannot integrate cos square x dx like this. <coughs> now, example based on the formula of exponential. Now, the e integration of e raised to x is e raised to x itself. So, the integration of e raised to 5x minus 3. So, e raised to 5x minus 3 itself into the derivative of this theta will occur in the denominator. So, derivative of this theta is 5. So, into 1 by 5. Now, on the same way, the integration of a raised to x, integration of a raised to x is 
a raised to x upon log a. Here a is any constant. So the integration of 2 raised to x is 2 raised to x upon log 2. Here we re replace a uh, by 2. Similarly, the integration of 3 raised to 5x plus 2. Okay. So the 3 raised to 5x plus 2 upon log 3 and the derivative of this theta, that is y, will occur in the denominator. <coughs> Students, before going to this formula, apply to this formula for the example, uh, this is one thing. If you have given any quadratic equation, that is a square plus 2ab plus b square, then you keep this equation in the form of a plus b whole square. Okay. But if you have quadratic equation, which will not we can directly uh, not return in the form of a plus b whole square at that time you have to first find out the last term with the help of this formula then you have to adjust uh, the last term and then you have to write the, uh, in the form of a plus b whole square uh, like if our given quadratic equation is 4x square plus 9x plus c so the 4x square this is the perfect square 2x whole square 9x is our middle term, but 3 is not a perfect square. So, for finding the last term our, by applying this formula, so our last term is what? Uh, here, middle term square. So, the middle term is 9x, last term. Last term is middle term square. So, uh, 9x into 9x upon 4 into first term. Our first term is 4x square. So by simplification, my answer will be here 3 by 2, 3 by 2. So my answer will be 9 by 4. So my last term is 9 by 4 whole square. And if I subtract 9 by 4 whole square, so that is 81 by 16, 81 by 16, right? So this is my perfect square square root of first term, sign of the middle term and the square root of last term. This is my last term. So the square root of last term. So this is a plus b whole square. And this one is 3 minus 81 upon 16. So minus 65 by 16. So we keep this as this a square minus b square. Okay. So we'll, we will use this trick for the uh, upcoming examples <coughs> okay so let's start with the first example that is example number 11 for the particular formula if our given equation is integration of 1 upon 3x square plus 5 dx then we want the multiple of x square is just unit so we want the multiple of x square is just 1 so we keep these three as a common term. So we keep one third as a common. And the integration is uh, this one upon x square plus five by three. So one third, so we keep this one third out of the integral. The integration of one upon x square plus five by three. This five by three we keep as a square. So square root of five by three square. So integration of one upon x square plus a square. Okay, now the formula of the integration is 1 upon x square plus a square. What is our a now? Our a is square root of 5 by 3. Okay, both are same because the square root of 5 upon square root of 3 or you may write square root of 5 by 3. Both are equal. So our a is square root of 5 by 3. So our for, uh, uh, when we are applying this formula for this special case here 1 upon under root 5 by 3 which is a and tan inverse x upon a, a is again under root 5 upon under root 3. By simplification here root 3 into root 3. So root 3 into root 5 is root 50 and we keep this uh, root 3 in the numerator. So tan inverse under root 3x upon root 5. <coughs> now the next example is 
this is for the quadratic okay now our given example is the form of quadratic equation so here integration of 1 upon x square plus 4x plus 9 so this is my perfect square but this is not the whole square so my first term is x square middle term is 4x so my last term is middle term square 4x into 4x upon 4 into first term so my last term is 4 so i split this 9 as 4 plus 5 now this is the perfect square whole square so here the square root of first term uh, sign of the middle term and the square root of the last term that is x plus 2 whole square plus root 5 square now we compare this term as 1 upon x square plus a square so my x is x plus 2 and my a is under root 5 so when i am going to apply this formula 1 by a that is 1 upon root 5 and tan inverse x plus 2 upon root 5 plus c okay <coughs> now the same trick we are applying here here in this example my quadratic equation x square is my first term for minus 4x is my middle term by applying the last term formula my last term will be 4 so i keep this 3 as 4 minus 1 so there is no change in any value of this term so the x square minus 4x i keep this 3 as 4 minus 1 because my last term will be the 4 so this one is my perfect square now x square root of first term minus that is the sign of the middle term and the 2 that is the square root of the last term so x minus 2 whole square minus 1 square now i compare this with integration of 1 upon x square minus a square my x is x minus 2 and a is 1 so 1 upon 2 log of x minus 2 x minus a upon x plus a so x minus 2 minus 1 x minus 2 plus 1 by simplification i get the answer 1 half log x minus 3 upon x minus 1 <coughs> the next one integration of 1 upon 7 minus 2 x square students uh, this x square may be in the first term may be in the second term but you must sure your multiple of x square uh, it must be 1 so if i get 2 common so 1 half here 7 by 2 minus x square if i keep this one half out of the integral so one half integration of one upon seven by two minus x square and this seven by two this is the square root of seven by two whole square minus x square so this is my a and this one is x variable okay so if i compare with this formula integration of one upon under root a square minus x square that is one upon two a log x plus a upon x minus a in this case my a is square root of 7 by 2 here root 2 into root 2 okay so 2 root 2 into root 7 is root 14 so 1 upon 2 root 14 and by getting lcm my answer is log root 2x plus root 7 upon root 2x minus root 7 now <clears throat> for the next example here the square root of uh, integration of 1 upon square root x square plus a square that is log x plus under root x square plus a square so 1 upon under root 3 x square plus 5 again the multiple of x square is 3 so if i if i get three, uh, root 3 as a common term so this 3 if i get common then in the bracket x square plus 5 by 3 so if i keep a 1 upon root 3 out of the integral 1 upon root 3 integration of 1 upon under root x square plus 5 by 3 okay so x square this 5 by 3 i keep as under root 5 upon under root 3 
whole square. So this is the square root of x square plus a square. So one by three log x plus under root x square plus a square a is under root y by root three. <coughs> After simplification, answer will be one upon root three log x plus under root x square plus y by three. Now, the next example is integration of one upon under root nine. Nine x square minus four. Okay. Now again, I repeat the multiple of x square is nine, so we keep nine as the common term. So square root of nine is three. So integration of one upon three under root x square. Here we keep nine as common. So in the second term, the remaining term is four by nine. So if I keep one third out of the integral, in the integral one upon under root. X square minus four by nine. So, uh, one third log x plus under root x square minus a square. Uh, yes, you can also apply a direct formula if your given equation is perfect square. Bhushan, yes, you can apply. Direct formula. If you have given perfect square, <clears throat> now uh, the x square minus a square, and by applying this formula, our answer will be one third log x plus under root nine x square minus four upon nine plus c. The next. Example number seventeen. <clears throat> That is integration of under root four x square minus four x minus five. So this is quadratic, but this is not a perfect square. So this your first term is four x square, your middle term is minus four x. So your last term, when you are applying the last term formula, last term. Is middle term square upon four into first term, then you will find your last term will be one. So I keep this minus five as one plus one minus six. You can also keep this as uh, see this is minus five. I want last term will always be positive. So you, you cannot write as minus one. You have to put as plus one. So there is no any uh, other uh, trick to address this minus pi as one. So you have to put your last term as plus one, and for adjusting this minus pi term, you have to put here minus six only. So now this is your perfect square, four x square minus four x plus one, and then minus six. This is your perfect square, two x minus one whole square. This is under root six square. Now you have to apply the formula of one upon under root one upon under root x square minus x a square. Okay, your x is two x minus one and your a is under root six. So your formula is log x that is two x minus one plus under root x square minus a square, which will your uh, which was your question only into <clears throat> the derivative of this theta x uh, this bracket is two into one half. The next sum is here the integration of the integration of one upon under root eight minus two x minus x squared. See here. This is minus x square. This one is minus two x. So my last term, if this is my first term, minus x square is my first term. Minus two x is my middle term. And if I find that at that time my last term will be minus one, so I <coughs> <coughs> sorry. So I keep this eight as nine minus one. Okay. 
So nine minus one minus two x minus x square. Now I rearrange this term nine minus x square minus two x minus one. So if I keep bracket over here, the remaining sign will be changed. So nine minus in the bracket x square plus two x plus one. This will be the perfect square. That is x plus one whole square here three square. So one upon under root three square minus x plus one whole square. So for this case. We are going to apply integration of one upon under root a square minus x square, that is sine inverse x by a. In this case, our x is x plus one and a is three. So answer is sine inverse x plus one by three plus c. So please remember this formula: integration of one upon under root a square minus a square. For The next example, uh, we are going for the this formula. Here, see, this is a minor difference between the previous and this formula. In previous formula, this square root will occur in the denominator, but in this case, this square root is in the numerator. So the integration of <coughs> integration of under root x square plus a square, that is x by two. Square root of x square plus a square plus a square by two log x plus square root of x square plus a square. So okay, let's apply this formula in example number nineteen. Here, integration of under root x square plus nine. Nine is the square of three. So this is the under root x square plus a square. So by applying this formula, x by two square root of x square plus three square plus A square A is three here, so three square by two log x plus under root x square plus nine. By simplification, this is our final answer. For example number twenty, we are going to apply formula four b. Four <coughs> b is four b is Here x by two under root x square minus two square minus a by two uh, a square by two. Our a is two, so a square is four. So four by two log x plus under root x square minus two square plus c. Just uh, the sign is differ only. Uh, the rest term will be the same. Now. This one is square root of twenty five minus x square. See example number twenty and example number twenty one. Both are different case. In example number twenty, a variable x will be the first term and constant will be the last. And in twenty one, constant first and the variable is last. So here, five square minus x square. So I have the integration of under root a square minus x square. The formula is x by two under root. A square minus x square plus a square by two sine inverse x by a. Now, <coughs> the, for the example number twenty-two, integration of four x square plus four x minus fifteen. So integration of four uh, x square, four x minus fifteen. But this is not a perfect square. So four x square plus four x. If I am applying again the formula for the last term, my last term will be the one. And so I, for the adjusting, I put minus fifteen as one minus sixteen. So this is now perfect square. Uh, square root of four x square that is two x sine of the middle term and the square root of the last term. So this is the perfect square two x plus one whole square minus sixteen as four square. Okay. Now you have to apply square root of x square minus a square. So square root of x square minus a square. What is your x? Your x is two x plus one, and your a is two. So two x plus one by two. Then square root of two x plus one minus two x plus one whole square minus four square. Similarly, a square by two. Your a is four. So sixteen by two log 
x plus square root of x square minus a square. That is your main question. You also write this term also. Into the derivative of this two <coughs> x plus one. That is one half. Uh, that is two. We put in the denominator into one half. By simplification, we'll get this answer. So, students, uh, in today's lecture, we have the some basic formula and example related on this. And tomorrow we'll continue this topic. But tomorrow's lecture is the most most important lecture for the base of the first chapter of the mathematics one. In tomorrow's lecture, uh, we'll do the integration with the limits. Okay, so uh, let's start some examples of integration related to this. So let's take, suppose you have given, your question is <coughs> integration of x into cos x dx. If your question is integration of x cos x dx, at that time, I know, uh, I know you are going for the integration by parts, but before going to integration by parts, I want to share you one formula that is integration of uv with respect to x. Here u and v are function of x. At that time, you have to put u as keep it same, u keep it same, then the integration of v minus derivative of u. I, I write in the this one. It indicates the derivative. Derivative of u. And this is the integration of integration. My plus derivative of u1. That is u2. And this v triple dash indicate the integration of v double dash. Then minus we have to continue till we get our term 0. So, we will start with this example. If I keep, see, if I take here x square, okay, not x. This is x square cos x dx. So, this is my u. This one is my v. So, when I am going to apply this formula, you have to put x square keep it same u keep it same in in this indicate the integration so integration of v what is the integration of cos x integration of cos x is sin x minus derivative of this term x square x derivative of x square is 2x these indicate the integration of this one so integration of sin x is minus cos x plus u2 indicate the derivative of u1 that is 2. Now this indicate the integration of this minus cos x that is minus sin x up to so on. Students this formula or this kind of example is most IMP example again uh, see our today's lecture will conclude in uh, very shortly. We will continue this topic in tomorrow's lecture, but please remember this formula. I will start tomorrow's lecture with this formula only because this is the most, most IMP formula for our mathematics one's first chapter. <coughs>